All right, what is up guys? VV back with another video. And we're gonna be looking at another Perona game. And this is over in the East, OP06 of course. And uh, in, a, in a very large tournament, a thousand player tournament. And pretty much any time you see all the way up here at the top left where it says championship or like, you know, when you see this board set up and we're looking at the East tournaments, this is part of their major tournament scene uh, type of scenario or type of st stuff going on. So we're at 2x speed, sounds off. We're going to do this. All right, so now they're doing rock, paper, scissors to see who goes first. And uh, we're going to do this the same way I, I typically do this, uh, where we just analyze the game, kind of talk about things, see how, see what, how the matchups are, and we're just going to analyze the game. Uh, so it looks like the uh, Perona, or excuse me, the Sakazuki player did not like his hand, and he is going to send it back. That table does not look comfortable, guys. Do you see how this guy's leg is? <laughs> like on the side of, on the, he's like kind of having to straddle the table. Uh, very unfortunate the way that they're seated, seated there. Or maybe you can put your legs under. I'm not exactly sure. Okay, anyway, <laughs> I know that was random, guys. But uh, yeah, let's, so let's see what happens. So neither player liked their starting hand. And it looks like they're going to do a little uh, cut, shuffle, all that good stuff. And now they're stuck with whatever they get. And I'm not exactly sure who goes first or, or what. All right, so looking at the Perona player, and this is the same Perona player as we saw in the last video. Okay, and his opening hand is a 2K with, he has two 2Ks with Suru and, and uh, Virgo. He has a 10 cost Do Flamingo, brand new Searcher, and X Drake, five cost 6K X Drake. It's, a, it's got a 1K counter, and on play, it can KO a rested four cost or less. So with the leader's effect, that card is straight gas. That card is money. Okay, now looking at the Sakazuki player's hand. Uh, that's interesting. So uh, long story short, you have t t two Borsalinos, Ice Age and Luchi. Uh, but the the effect there, it's like a this is like a miniature Luchi. It's it's got a crazy name. I'm I'll try to pronounce it. It's Amano Murakumo Sword. And it is a two-cost Navy-type event. It's got my guy Rayleigh on there. Y'all know Rayleigh's like my favorite. Or for those who don't know, Rayleigh's like my favorite character. Him fighting um, Borsalino. It has the effect of main. Place up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of two or less. And up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of one or less. At the bottom of the owner's deck in any order. And the trigger activates it. So it's basically just like a event version. A cheap version that's an event base for Lucci. Okay, so uh, pretty solid starting hand. Not incredible, but also not bad at all. Like, it, there's definitely way worse hands you can have. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive into it. So, so the Sakazuki player is going to go first. He is going to trash the event we just talked about to draw a card with the leader's effect and pass turn. Perona, to Dawn, draws into a Kuzan, plays out brand new, and let's see what we get. Borsalino, Baby 5, and another Kuzan. So he'll probably draw the Borsalino here. Yep, it just has the most utility out of those, and he already has a uh, Kuzan in hand. So let's see what we get here. So the uh, the Sakazuki player, what did he draw to? He drew into another Borsalino. Okay, trashes the Luchi to draw another card. And it, thank goodness it was another Luchi. Because I was going to say, it's kind of dangerous to just tra toss all of your, your board clear. Because one thing about Sakazuki, guys, for those who don't know, blue-black Sakazuki, ha it's, it's, just, it's basically a straight removal deck. And... Perona has a lot of cards that go down on the board here. And one of them being Borsalino. Well, Lucci can't hit Borsalino. So I think it maybe it was kind of a mistake to toss the um the event because even though that's a mini Lucci effect, it bottom decks the cards as opposed to KOing them. Okay, so let's see what happens here. It looks like he's gonna swing for eight. Says, alright, swinging eight, and he gets a Sabo from that from life. The the Perona player does, and now it's his four turn four dawn turn. Did he draw a card? Did he even did he even draw a card? I'm sorry. Okay, he did. So he draw he drew into a 10 cost Do Flamingo for the turn. And then he's gonna swing for five. Swing for five at life. We'll see what the Sakazuki player does. He takes it, gets another Luchi. Okay, Kuzan to draw a card and pass. So now nothing that the Sakazuki player can play is out of range of his leader's effect in combination with the um the four cost Kuzan. So it trashes one of the Luchis to draw with the leader effect and gets a brand new. <clears throat> um, 
This is a less than ideal situation. Now, it looks like he's going to play a Borsellino follow-up here. So, swing for six at leader, and then minus one probably to the Kuzan, I would imagine. Borsellino and pass. Okay, so it didn't matter anyway. Okay. So now let's see what happens here. This is the sixth dawn turn for the Perona player. And we're, we're really off to the races here. Um, the Sakazuki player did not have a great start, not getting the turn two brand new. Uh, he does have a Borsellino down, but this is, you know, for those who, who have played against Sakazuki or know how that deck plays out, it can have a pretty fast start for being like a removal control deck. It can, it can get pretty blitzy. Uh, but the Perona player, on the other hand, has had just an immaculate curve. Turn one, brand new. Turn two, Kuzan. Now turn three, he has options. He, you know, he can he can play out Rosinante and a Borsellino. He can play out the Sakazuki to try and get some other effects going. He has a lot of options here. So let's see what he chooses. Now I don't think this is the, the turn to establish X Drake, even though he can do that for just a five cost six K. So. Swing five, uh, minus four to um, to Borsellino, and swing five at face. He tapped down the Borsellino with the leader's effect. And guys, one thing I got to mention is Perona seems like it was built to beat Sakazuki. Like, uh, or like the leader was designed to deal with Sakazuki. Because think of all the four cost cards that Sakazuki runs, and, and less than that, right? Like three cost Hina, four cost um, Kuzan, four cost Luchi, four cost Borsellino. Well, four cost Rebecca as well, by the way. Well, the leader just says, okay, get it out of my way, and I'm just coming through. So j just very, very nice. And so he's going to take the 5k hit, interestingly. Okay, and now swing six at life. If you, if you didn't want to block that one, here comes... And wow, so no 2K counters in hand, by the way. Not not a single 2K counter in the um, in the the oh my gosh, the Sakazuki's hand. And I think I mentioned in the in the last video, the, the last video that I did on this on this um, tournament was was Perona versus Katakuri. And if you haven't checked that game out, please do yourself a favor and check that game out. That game was <laughs> crazy, cr very crazy ending that I did not see coming. But I'll just say this, there was an issue in that game with 2k counters. So it's, it, man, here, here we go again. Okay, and he he gets into a Luchi, another car without a 2k counter. Golly, that's, gosh, man, that, that is just crazy, guys. That is just simply crazy. Okay, so let's see what, um, let's see what the Kuzan player can do. Because the, the Frodo player followed up with uh, Sabo, draw two, trash two, and he's going to trash a Borsalino and a Rosinante. He's sitting on three life. He has almost, he has half a board right now, a little over half a board, and still no 2K counters. This is um, uh, very, very unfortunate. And it's a seven dawn turn for the Sakazuki, so he can't even play a double blocker here. It's like he can't go, he can't go Borsalino, Borsalino just to try to survive here. Nope, he can't, he has, like, he only has seven dawn. Okay. And gets a Borsalino. Okay, man, that is crazy. Uh, maybe you just do brand new searches here. Maybe you just go for a 2K counter. Or at least try to get some stuff off the board. And, and he has no cost reduction either. Wow. Well, he has an Ice Age. I'm going to pause it. So this is the play that I would do here, guys. This is just me personally. And this is just given the current um, position of the game. However you want to say that. I would swing five into the Kuzan, get a card out of hand. He's going to block it, or maybe he'll even, and, and by the way, and do minus one to the um, Kuzan. Then he'll probably block it or use a counter out of hand. Who knows? That's fine. Then I would Ice Age the Sabo or the Kuzan, which it doesn't matter. Whichever, you have to remove one of them, whatever the case is. And then you just bottom deck both of them with the new two cost event up here, the Amaru new. Uh, the the Amano Murakumo sword, like just just get them out of here. Like you need to survive here, and then you can follow up with the Rebecca search. Well, actually, you don't want to do Rebecca because there's nothing to grab out of here. So you would just follow up with a Borsalino just to try and stay in this game. But let's see what he does. I have no idea. I have not seen this game, um, but but we are you know I'm at least trying to analyze it with you guys to see like what are some possibilities here. Another thing, too, I have to mention is I don't know if I would have taken... Like, when he swung seven, I think I'd rather just lose two cards from my hand here. You know, just anything... Well, it'd be three, actually. Yeah, that's... Oh, that's brutal. 
Okay, he's got his hand on Ice Age. He definitely has the same idea as I do. Okay, so pay one, minus five there. Boom, boom. He's going to uh, uh, Murakumo sword, both of those out of the way. Swing five at Kuzan, right? Okay. I don't know who he's swinging at, but there's a 1k counter to get out of it, and, and he's, he's moving on. And that should be his turn after playing this, um, after playing the uh, Borsalina. The, the Borsalina. Oh, I thought he passed turn. <laughs> the way he had his hand, he was asking for the uh, for his for his graveyard or for his trash. I, I think you just play. You just have to play Borsalino here, right? Okay, swing seven. Oh gosh, man, that was a risky one there, guys. Swing seven with two dawn active for brand new. Okay, Whew, guys, that, that that almost gave me a heart attack. I was gonna say if he, if he, I don't, I don't know if this guy realizes if the Proto counters out of that he i think he just wins the game next turn because you just tap down any block or anything he'd play after this if he needed to and he could swing for you know what would he be on one two three four five six he'd be on eight dawn he could just go nine and nine and that would just be so much but our our uh, prona player obviously does not know the hand of the sakazuki player okay he's got to be going for a 2k here Stop. Still does not see a 2k counter. That is wild, guys. That is wild. How many 2k counters does, does this deck run? I would I would imagine it runs Suru and Tashigi. So that would be eight right there. Okay, so let's see. I, I don't think there's much of a decision here. You just take the Ice Age. Like because you can you can fish fish out these um okay, he's looking at his trash again. You could get the uh the Hinas back with your um with your Rebecca here. Okay. And has he used it? I, I can't. This, this turn has lasted so long that I don't actually remember if he already got out, the, if he did the leader's effect. Okay, I think he did. Okay. So let's see. Eight dawn turn for the Perona player. Let's see what he does here. Okay. Eight dawn turn. He's got it sorted into a five pile and a three pile. Oh, wow. Okay, so swing eight at Borsalino, I think. I could be wrong. I think he's swinging eight. At, yeah, he swings eight at Borsalino. Plays out the Sabo. Now, the Sakazuki player... Sorry, guys, I had to pause it. The, Saki, the Sakazuki, play, Sakazuki player... I can't even talk right now. Has to be, like, giving off a sigh of relief right now. Like, you know, just... Whew. Okay, now I can try to make it, you know, into the next next turn. Get some 2K counters. Establish double blockers next turn. And just, you know, move on from there. So that that was ideal. That he, that he swung at the Borsalino. Because he has three more in hand. Okay, so he snap, he's going to trash uh, a, the, the Proto player with the Sabo, draw two, trash two. He's going to trash the brand new and the other x Drake. it looks like. Yeah. And he still has a 2k counter in Suru, two 10-cost uh, Doflamingos, a Virgo, Borsalino, and a uh, zero-cost 3k counter. Okay. So now it is the Sakazuki turn. He gets to a great eruption. Okay. That is, that is nice. It is something. I would probably trash my Luchi at this point to draw another card if, if I'm the Sakazuki player, just to uh, just to draw another card. And let's see let's see what he's what is he thinking here? Maybe you use brand new first. So because what I was thinking is so for me I'm gonna pause. I'm I'm sorry guys. I would definitely go double Kuzan this or double sorry double Borsalino this turn like 100% of the time because I have one life left. And my opponent has two cards on the board and he can tap down one of my guys and I have zero 2k counters. So the first thing I would do is do a cycle with Lucci and then my decision would be made from there. Okay, so let's see what he does. And that is the correct call. It immediately trashes Lucci. Gets a Hound Blaze. That was ideal because now he can move that threat off the board and now I would feel comfortable playing just a single blocker. Now you can do the brand new search. Now you can, you know, uh, I wouldn't brand new first. Hang on. I would definitely grade eruption first because then you can do everything you need to still anyway. Let's see what he does. Okay. He's deep in the tank here. That, you know, this is an important game. Obviously, it's at a tournament. And he plays Rebecca. Okay, so plays Rebecca. Gets out the Hino, minus four, minus four to the uh, Sabo. He's going to Great Eruption. Give him plus, give your brand new plus 3,000 to swing for six this turn. Still has three Dawn active. 
Um, so swing six. Uh, man, I don't like that play, guys. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't, I don't like that play very much. But that's just me personally. Swing six at life. So swing swing six twice. Gets gets a 2K counter out from the brand new swing. Gets out another brand new. Uh, and he got one uh, life away from the... Excuse me. He got a 2K counter from attacking with brand new. And then he took a life when he swung with Sakazuki for six. And now he's going to play out his final brand new. Which, let's see what it got him. Hina... And I, I don't think we have seen even one 2K counter. That That is so crazy to me. I mean, I, again, I don't know how many 2K counters this guy's running in his deck. And if you know, by all means, put in the comment section below. But that's the craziest thing I've ever seen. How he's gone through... Like, let's just count real quick. Okay, he's gone through 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 cards are on the field and in hand. And then he is trashed and cycled through 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So basically 20 cards and no 2k counter. That's wild. Okay, well he can easily tap down the Rebecca here. And he is on 10 Dawn. So in this situation, I think you tap down the Rebecca. You attack into maybe the brand new, I'm not sure. And just play a 10 cost Do Flamingo. Do Flamingo. He swings 5 at life. Now that's an easy decision. You just 1k counter out of that. Yep, every single time. So he tapped down the Rebecca, the Hina, and he's going to let the brand new stand up. The leader uh, was tapped as well, or remain will remain tapped because of the Doflamingo's effect. Okay, um, well, you know how Perona works if you're the Sakazuki player. So how are you... See, th okay, this is where I feel like the, um, the Borsalino is just a little more effective last turn because he could have drawn an extra card with his, um, what's this called, Great Eruption. And this turn, if he needed to, he has an Ice Age. But then the Hound Blaze, I don't know. There's still an issue. He's going to have to draw a card this turn. With what, though? See, so here's the problem. I think he... This sounds crazy, guys. Oh, no, no. He has a Hina down here. So I would trash the Hina to draw a card as my very first play. And then I would follow... I would almost 100 million percent follow it up with this uh, Great Eruption into Ice Age. Hoping for something to take this out. Well, no, you still would be able to take... Hang on. Okay, here you go, guys. Ready for this? This is the play. So the play that I would use right here, you still cycle out the Hina first things first. Then you go minus two to put him at eight. And then you minus five puts him at... Oh, it puts him at three. Oh, my gosh. I'm sorry, guys. Never mind. You, so you can't do what I wanted because the leader's tapped down. Because what I was going to say was... If he could have swung with his leader to put him at two, then he could have used his um, Gecko Moria to KO this with a Luchi from Trash and gone from there. Ugh, man, this this is a tough situation. So the next play I would do is, like I said, then I would go Hina, and then let's see what he gets from there. So, all right, here we go. He could still use his leader's effect to, to draw a card, Trash a card. And by the way, it was kind of greedy last turn swinging with the Sakazuki. Maybe he shouldn't have done that, knowing his opponent was going to be on 10 Dawn the next turn. But I don't know how familiar these players are with the list and everything. That's that's something that, you know, we can't really know. I, I have no idea who these who these players are. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, well, hang on, hang on, hang on. He trashes a Ice Age. Okay, I guess it didn't matter regardless there, but I wouldn't have trashed the Ice Age. Um, okay, so I would be doing Great Eruption now to draw a card. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. So let's see what he gets, and let's see if, if, if that was the right call, trashing the Ice Age here. Because if he could get, like, I don't know if he runs 3,000 worlds or if he runs something along those lines. Okay, I, let's see what he gets. He gets a Rebecca. Okay, so, yeah, I don't... Oh, wait a second. Yeah, he could have in this... So, okay, there we go, guys. In this situation... I think he could have gone... So, Ice Age, Great Eruption. That puts him at three. And then you, with the... Then you can use a 2K counter, Suru, to get the remaining point off. But, well, no, you're still one Dawn short. So, he's still just... Like, almost no matter what, he's pretty much one Dawn short. Oh, no, no, no. He can. He can, right? Excuse me. Hang on. Hang on. All right. Here we go, guys. Sorry. Give me one second. So, what he should have done... Like I said, he should have, he should, well, no, if he had cycled the Hina, then it still wouldn't work. See, so that's where you have to cycle the Gecko Mori, I guess, because there's already a Hina in your hand. So the, the correct play there, you guys ready for this? 
you would you and again we can't predict this but this what the, this is what the correct play was you trash the gecko moria with the leader's effect to draw a card then you uh then you use the great eruption to minus two the um the guy here the, the doflamingo to put him at eight you ice age to get him down to three then you use the uh rebecca that you didn't know you were going to get to get a kuzan out of hand or excuse me not a kuzan a luchi out of hand play out the the um the hina getting rid of one of these other ones here it doesn't matter which one to get him down to the final zero amount and then you could actually ko him with the luchi you get back from the rebecca so you pull a, a, a luchi out of the trash play your hina from hand that was technical and he had no way of knowing what he was going to get but that is that is definitely what the right play would have been looking back with some future knowledge Okay, so he's going to minus two here. He's going to grab back Lucci. So he ended up doing basically the same thing. Minus, minus four. So what is he at? So two, four, eight. So there you go. He's going to get it this way. That way worked as well. Very nice. So he was able... So remember, Great Eruption was minus two. Um, and what else was? Oh, and Suru was minus two. And then he was able to Hina minus four to get him down to two. Okay, and he's going to put back, the, the Lucci effect is going to put back a bunch of events. Very nice. And he takes out the 10 cost Doflamingo. Very nice. So now he's at least not going to get, he's not going to lose this turn. <clears throat> but still, all right, let's see what happens. Man, that was, that was really technical, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry I got down to that. So now this is a complicated situation. This is a very complicated situation here, but I think you just drop down the second um, Doflamingo. I think you go, all right, tap down your, your blocker, swing four at face, it looks like. Looks like he's gonna swing four at face, or five, excuse me, <laughs> swing five at face, 1K counter out, <clears throat> yep, and keep all of your blockers and one of the Hena's, and the, and the leader taps, excuse me, of course, the leader. And now, so now, now you have to get more, or excuse me, you have to get some blockers down here. So maybe, <clears throat> geez, maybe you go for game here. Is that the other option? But man, look at look at the hand right now. Pause. Look at the Perona player's hand. He has a two K, a two K, and he has two three Ks by trashing two cards from hand. So he's looking at six, ten, ten thousand power encounters right now. With two life left. Yeah. This game's pretty much over unless you play super defensively here. Pretty much over. And I think the answer is to, to play defensively, by the way. I think you just... I think you have to. Well, see, there's no way to get around the Perona's leader effect. That that Perona leader effect, guys, is just wild. Okay, so he's thinking right now. <clears throat> I think he's going to try to go for lethal. <laughs> Because I don't think, and he's already used his leader effect to trash to trash a card and draw a card. Okay, so he's going to swing eight. Here we go. So all he has to do is counter out of one of these and he wins the game. Okay, so he is going to, but the reason he's not countering out is he wants him to fully overextend. So there's no way for his opponent to crawl out of it, to put out a block or anything like that. So it looks like all he has left is a 9k attack and a 9k attack. That's all he can do from here. But it's all false hope because he can get out of any of it. He has 10k in hand already. And now he has even more. Okay. He's just going to look through his hand. There's no reason to look into the trash. The game's over. <clears throat> okay. He's going to take that life. And now he's going to swing 9 with, with uh, Hina. And he's going to 10k out of that. Or get to, you know, go to 5. Go to 10. Okay. And that's going to be game. Uh, I think what you do here is you go what five five so go 12 and then go 13. go 12 go 13 gg good game excellent all right that was a really awesome game guys that was really a really cool game um I, i've said it before i'm pretty sure let me i'm just gonna hit play while we're talking over it i don't have a lot to add to this one this was a really good game uh, i think both players played really well uh, a few things I'd have done differently as the Sakazuki player, but I feel like the the Perona deck was very straightforward. You just play each card as you as you curve out to, it and it just works out beautifully. Um, but with with um, with the way these leaders are, 
I think Perona is just pretty much a hard counter to Sakazuki. I could be wrong about that. It's, it's probably also very good into um, yellow-green Yamato as well, but we'll have to see. All right, guys, y'all tell me what y'all think in the comment section below. Uh, if I missed anything, please help me out, and um, I appreciate you guys. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you've not already, and until next time, guys, peace.